Welcome back everyone to our tutorial series on Distant Worlds Universe. In the last episode we set up a game so we're ready to jump into it. Now I should caution you that the moment you hit start playing you're at risk of losing countless hours of your life to this glorious 4x space game. When we do click start playing the first thing we want to do is hit spacebar to pause the game and we're gonna go ahead and take a look around while we have the game paused. We'll, we'll make some adjustments to taxes and research in a second but I find the first most natural order of business is to just examine the game world that we've created. Now using mouse wheel of course and right click to scroll is a pretty natural way of viewing things. Also I like to hotkey my home planet so I'm going to hit control 1 just in case we accidentally scroll ourselves somewhere we don't like. Just double tapping 1 will bring us back to centered on that. In the starting system there are two things we're going to look for. The first is, if we have it, yes here this triangular configuration of white boxes. So it's like a white box pyramid. This indicates that there's a rune on this planet. So most planets don't have any icon on the top right, but this planet, as indicated by that symbol, does. So we can click on this. We don't know the details yet because we haven't explored the runes. We'll have to send an explorer ship over to look at it. But that, it, the runes are very important because in your first system, you will not unlock hypertrack technology until you explore the runes that have the precursor data, whatever it is, that allows you to begin researching hyperdrives. And I'll showcase that a little bit more when we look at research, but for the time being, just know that the runes are important because we're gonna have to, oh, I missed this one. Yeah, so we do have two runes. So one of these two is gonna unlock for us hyperdrive technology, which is, as you imagine, very important. The other thing we wanna look for in our opening system is in the minimap. We're gonna look for these gray triangles. You can see two of them here, one and two. So let's just go ahead and scroll in on where their location is. And here's our first one. This is an abandoned ship. Now this one is not damaged, so it's free for the taking. Basically the first empire, which comes close enough in a small circle around this ship, I think maybe like this big, will get a pop-up. I mean, it, we will get a pop-up, but other nations will just automatically control it. And then we'll ask you if we want to investigate. A hint in distant worlds is always investigate everything. Don't ever not investigate. So investigating this would basically send some of your crew over to the other ship and you would conquer it. It would be yours to control. Now, don't worry about the loss of crew. That's not really, it's all abstracted in this game. So we won't, there wouldn't be any losses. So it's a really important because we can get over here and take over a free ship. The other uh, ship, the other gray icon, the gray triangle we see here. Let's zoom in. My, oh, I'm cold. There it is. So yeah, this usually happens where one of the ships will be located next to a planet with the runes. And that might indicate that this is the planet with the hyperdrive technology. So we can see that this ship has its uh, structure kind of revealed, that the surface of the ship looks like it has a few cracks or holes in it. And this just indicates for us that the ship is damaged. So 31 components are damaged, we see. What that means is getting close enough in range to this ship won't automatically capture it for you you need to send a construction ship over to repair it. So that covers the two things I want to mention in our starting system. Now let's just kind of scroll out with the mouse wheel and view the galaxy that we've made. And this is one of my favorite aspects of Distant Worlds Universe is the organic scrolling that you just move seamlessly from the system view into the galaxy view. Because that's how real space is, right? There's not a different view of a galaxy from like a system view and a galaxy. It's all one big, it's all part of the galaxy. It's all just part of the universe. It's all space. So having this organic tr transition makes a lot of sense for me and I find it a pretty compelling feel, uh, a bit immersive. Because you have the same situation where if I want, I can zoom in on any part of space and just like space really is, there's a lot of emptiness here. Now that doesn't mean I couldn't send a ship here. I can. You can move anywhere on the game map that you'd like. However, because space is mostly empty, if you decide to move into this middle of this area, you're just probably not going to find anything there. So here we are at our, our galaxy view. We see that we have created a rim and this is the interior. This is the reason why I don't like to put myself on the interior because it's possible you could you could be stranded. It's such a large distance between these different stars that you'd have to get your technology or your fuse, fuel cells pretty highly advanced before you could get from one to the other. And that's the same reason why I like the rim, because you can kind of move along the rim and somebody on the opposite side isn't going to be able to jump right over to you. Great, so I, I want to mention a few hotkeys before we move on. 
So double tapping one does center your view on the home planet, but it doesn't do anything as far as zooming. And if you want to try to avoid carpal tunnel, here's a few hints for you. Pressing the home key brings you all the way zoomed in. Insert will bring you to the system view. Now I don't use home very often. Maybe only if I have a lot of ships on my home planet using my home port, then I might need to zoom in just to get the exact ship that I want. However, insert is usually what I use, so I can make a few changes to the system, and then I'll hit delete, which will just show us a few of the local systems. And this is really nice for looking at different, you can just switch over to this system, and then hit delete to get back out, and then switch over to this system. I'm just double clicking. So it's pretty useful. And I don't ever find myself using, but it takes us all the way out to the full galaxy view. Good, so now that we've covered camera, I think I'll use insert to get us back to system view. And actually, we're gonna start making some changes to our planet. To do that, have your planet selected and then double click on the name. This is gonna bring up a few info tabs. We see population, cargo, resources. The one I wanna focus on to begin with is troops and characters. It's nice to make sure that your battalion, you sometimes are not given one. If you aren't, you can recruit one here. I don't think it's necessary. If you're gonna be invaded within the first year or two of, of you know starting a new game, you're probably in a situation where you're gonna to have to restart the game anyway, because that's not a good sign. But if you happen to have a troop here, I just like to make sure that they're garrisoned. So we just select it. I can hit ungarrison, which means the background turns white. And when I click garrison, we can see that now the background is green. Garrisoning just means it won't leave the planet with any of my other ships. And I don't want this one to leave the home planet. It's nice to have some defense. Otherwise it's possible to, you know, you could accidentally board this sh these uh, troops onto one of your troop transports, and we don't want to do that. But the more important thing I want to adjust here is my tax rate. I'm actually going to set it down to zero. Why am I doing that? Well, let me just explain very briefly the tax mechanics. Tax has the advantage, of course, bringing in income. Tax income is tax percentage, some function of tax percentage and population. So we can see the population currently is about 4.5 billion people. Well, billion Actarians. Setting a low tax rate is going to increase population growth. So what we're gonna do is this short-term loss for long-term gains. Because tax rate also affects population growth, having like a 20% tax uh, rate is gonna really slow down your population growth. But having 0% is gonna increase your population so that later when we tax, we'll be getting more from our taxes. What I'm trying to say is essentially this. If we tax at zero, we'll have a much higher population by, let's say, five years in the future. And then we can tax at 20%. If we tax at 10% now and then waited five years and tax at 20%, we'd be making a lot less money overall just because we, our population would not have grown quite as quickly. But tax um, revenue isn't the whole story. Population also controls how fast you build ships and contributes to research. So we really want that low tax rate and what we're going to do is just basically straddle the line of being negative in our money and just having barely enough to keep going at zero tax rate. When you get down to about zero money, just increase the tax rate to about 10% for as long as you need to get a chunk of change, maybe about 10,000 more credits or whatever this money is. And then you can go ahead and set it back down to 0%. So we just want to try to min-max our way with as low tax rate as we can for as long as possible. Once you get up to about like 20 billion people, then this is gonna matter a lot less and you can start setting um, a consistent tax rate. Okay, so we've covered research, I mean, sorry, we've covered camera, troops, and taxes. Last thing we're gonna cover is research. Research is broken down into three categories, which are uh, effectively, you can do th research in three technologies at the same time. One in weapons, one in energy and construction, and one in high tech and industrial. Inside either any of these categories, you can only do research of one item at a time. So in weapons, I guess we'll just cover this uh, one by one. In weapons, you really are free to choose whatever you like. There's people who are going to tell you, and you know I can even agree with them, that the most upgraded Titan Beam is one of the most effective weapons in the game. And it's true, people have run the numbers. Other people will tell you, no, no, carriers are better, so make sure you go down the Starfighters line because carriers can fight at a greater range and are at less risk of taking casualties. That's also very true, carriers are extremely powerful. Ultimately, though, you're fighting an artificial intel intelligence that's not very smart. So you can get away with using really 
inefficient conf configurations of weapons and still succeed, at least until you get to the higher difficulty le levels. But at least for your first game, I suggest that you choose only one or two, probably two categories, and just work left to right. How research in general works is, if you remember in our opening game setup, we set a research cost to 240. You can see the project size for this is 240K. So that's exactly the value that we set when we are creating our new game. Every tier of research, if we work left to right, left being the far left being the first tier, second tier, etc., every tier is going to double the cost of the previous tier's uh, research cost. So if we have 240 for tier 2, that means the tier 1 would be 120, and we see that it is. 240, this was 480, 960, etc. Now, there are a few exceptions to that, but I'll point those out, especially the hyperdrive stuff, but we'll get to that in a second. So basically my recommendation is pick two things. I typically pick beam weapons and missiles. I don't know, missiles are a pretty strong early game, but they're very weak later on. I just have fun though. Those are the two technologies I want to build. What we're actually going to start off with though is armor plating, which means I'm going to right click all the rest of the technologies, even the ones I just selected right now, to cancel, what missiles, there it is, to cancel those. I want armor plating first. The reason why, and I recommend this for you as well, is because civilian craft will also be able to take advantage of armor so it's good because they're going to affect more ships so we should get that technology first second all i'm going to continue down the blasters line and third i'm actually going to get this improved logistics which is just going to decrease the cost of my troops a bit great let's move over to energy and construction and this one houses for us the warp field precursors which you can see in red project is disabled must enable through exploration and that's the runes on the planets that I was talking about. One of those planets will unlock this technology so that we can actually start researching it. Until then, the two technologies that I recommend are shields, yes, but first I think we should focus on space construction. So after space construction, we're going to do shields. Usually what happens is, in the middle of working on shields, you get warp field precursors unlocked by exploring the planet. And what I recommend you do is immediately switch to warp field and then once that's complete, you can move back to incomplete shields. In high tech, you really have your pick of the litter. There's a lot of good options here. To start the game though, and that's mainly what we're talking about here is just to start a game. I'm gonna go with entertainment systems, medical systems, and then transport systems. The reason for this is entertainment and medical have planetary enhancements. If you put their modules onto a, a space station, which is orbiting a planet, then they're going to give a little bonus to the population below. And that's pretty useful. So that's going to pay bigger dividends for us the earlier we can get it. Next thing, I want transport systems because this is going to start to fuel our tourism economy, which is very, very powerful in distant worlds. So we're going to get that up and running third. That concludes, I think, all the research we need to talk about. We'll look into this, into this tab more when we're looking at ship and station design. But since that's a really complicated topic, I think I'll save it for the next video. So this is going to conclude this video. We covered briefly the camera and looking around, troops, taxes, and research. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for ship and station design in the next episode.